Hey, what is up you guys? This is Steffi, AKA In My Humble Opinion, and welcome to the first official video of 2021. On this channel, I primarily talk a lot about pop culture. However, I will say over the past year or so, I feel like my channel has been primarily known for my reaction and review videos. We watch a lot of TV shows here like The Crown, Get In Loser, We're Going Stalking, oh Killing Eve. <laughs> this is insane. The Handmaid's Tale. <gasps> oh fuck. Pose. American Horror Story. Oh my God. And a bunch of other TV shows. I didn't know I was gonna cry during the Queen's Gambit. And because of that, a lot of people over time have always asked me, can you react to this? Can you react to that? And you know, the thing is, aside from watching, you know, shows here on the channel with all of you, while that's fun, I also watch a bunch of other TV shows by myself <laughs> or with a friend, socially distanced, of course. So in today's video, I thought I would talk about five TV shows that I watched in 2020 and didn't tell you. That's why her hair is so big, it's full of secrets. So the first show that I want to talk about that I watched in 2020 and didn't really talk about at all on my channel is probably the number one most requested show that a lot of you wanted me to react and review last year. And that show is Normal People. Normal People is based on the book Normal People by Sally Rooney. And the show takes place primarily in Ireland and follows Marianne and Connell. And you see pretty much how their relationship evolves over time from when they first meet in secondary school to to their time at university and just as they're figuring out what they're going to do after they graduate. This show deals with a lot of different issues like mental health and struggling in abusive relationships and first loves. So watching normal people is definitely like an emotional, quiet, but emotional experience. I remember thinking back when I was watching it, like the cinematography is very visual ASMR. And I especially love the episodes where they travel to different places. Like there's an episode where they go to Italy and it's basically like call me by your name, but for straight people minus the cannibalism. I would say my favorite moment while watching Normal People was when Connell and Marianne are FaceTiming and Connell has a hard time sleeping because he has a lot of anxiety. And then Marianne like offers to stay on FaceTime with him through the night so he can go to sleep. If you haven't seen the show, this probably sounds really creepy, but if you have seen the show, like you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like just like hits you. Again, if you haven't seen the show or if you want to re-watch it, at least here in the United States, it's available to watch on Hulu and it's such an easy binge, you guys. Like, I feel like if you, you're really into it, you can easily get through this in like two days. A lot of you may know that I watched a, you know, a little British comedy called Fleabag, which was written, created, starred the iconic Miss Phoebe Waller-Bridge and I utterly fell in love with her as one does after watching Fleabag. And aside from watching Killing Eve, I decided to watch another series that she did pre-Killing Eve, pre-Fleabag, and that series is called Crashing. So Crashing is a British comedy that centers on six young adults in their 20s, 30s, and they're living together as property guardians in a disused hospital. And their job is to basically keep the building safe in exchange for cheaper rent, but the show sort of just explores all of the relation dynamics between these six different people living in a really like unique living situation. So as expected with Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I just feel like the comedy, the pacing is just like really snappy and punchy. It's witty. Every character has such a unique, distinct personality. It was just really welcomed to watch a lighthearted show during 2020. So this was perfect. For those of you who are living in the United States and you've never heard of Crashing and you want to watch Crashing, you can find this on Netflix. Six episodes, each about like 20 to 23-ish minutes. So you can easily finish this in a day if you're looking for a new show to watch. After watching Killing Eve, because I was feeling really deprived and I just like didn't know what to do with myself, what am I gonna do with my life? I decided to go back and watch some of Jodie Comer's previous work pre-Killing Eve. And the first show that I watched was a show called My Mad Fat Diary. So My Mad Fat Diary is a British 
teen comedy drama that aired back in 2013. And it is based on the novel, My Mad Fat Teenage Diary by Ray Earl. And the basic setup for the series is Ray leaves the hospital after, well, I don't want to spoil, but she leaves the hospital and then she gets reunited with her best friend named Chloe, who's played by Jodie Comer. And Chloe sort of invites Ray to start hanging out with her group of friends. And over the course of the series, you just see Ray and the friends just like grow and evolve as people and their friendships grow and evolve over time. I feel like I'm like sensing a theme here, but it's a really, really great show. And honestly, like out of all the shows I'm going to be talking about today, especially I'm going to give my Mad Fat Diary my hidden gem award of 2020 because there is genuinely no reason why or how I would have stumbled upon this show on my own had I not like watched Killing Eve first and be like, you know what? I really want to invest time into Jodie Comer's acting career. I love the show so much. The characters are so relatable and they're likable. And the show covers so many different topics like eating disorders, body image, mental health, female friendships, relationships, coming out to your friends, growing up, you know, just all of the issues that one explores as a teenager. But I think my favorite aspect of the show really is that this show just has so much heart and even though they do cover a lot of serious issues like it's never in the way where it feels like they're hitting you over the head and they're like this is the lesson of the day you guys it's just like i feel very comforted by that show i feel like if you are someone who likes coming of age tv shows like okay euphoria or sex education you should really give my mad fat diary a chance the show is on hulu here in the united states each episode is about 45 five-ish minutes a piece. So if you want to like maybe invest a weekend, maybe two weekends, depending on how busy you are, I feel like my Mad Fat Diary, you should definitely give that one a shot. And again, like I said, it's like my hidden gem of 2020 that I discovered love that show. So after I finished watching My Mad Fat Diary, the next show on my Jodie Comer exploration was Dr. Foster. And I truly thought that this show was about her and that she was Dr. Foster because if you look up this show on Netflix, she is the literal face of the thumbnail for the show. <laughs> But Dr. Foster is basically a British drama that follows a woman named Gemma Foster, who's a doctor. She's played by Saran Jones. She is convinced that her husband is cheating on her. And well, are we really that surprised? So if you are a regular viewer on my channel and you like a lot of the shows that I react and review, I feel like out of all the shows that I'm talking about in today's video, this is the one that is definitely up your alley. Like file Dr. Foster under scorned women. It's very dramatic. And honestly, that entire first episode is a lesson in gaslighting because fuck every person that lives in Gemma's town they're the worst. Personally preferred season one over season two because the finale of season one is like so good. That dinner scene, that dinner scene, if you've seen Dr. Foster, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. You're a fucking bitch. Bitch is right. And I'm a wolf tonight. Even though season two is a bit clunky, in my opinion, I feel like Dr. Foster is definitely a show worth investing your time in. So if you're living in the United States and you have a Netflix account, you can find Dr. Foster on Netflix there's only two seasons, five episodes each, and each episode is about like an hour or so. Okay, and the last show that I watched in 2020, like truly the last show that I watched in 2020, and I just didn't really talk about on my channel, was a show that a lot of you were wanting me to react and review as of late. And it's a show that literally everybody is talking about, and that show is Bridgerton. For those of you guys who don't know, Bridgerton is based on the Julia Quinn Bridgerton series novels, and it is set during the Regency era and follows the Bridgerton family during the debutante season. And one of the daughters, Daphne Bridgerton, is looking for a potential suitor. While all of this is happening, there's a gossip girl-like character named Lady Whistledown who writes these pamphlets and spills all of the town's tea. So it's kind of like gossip girl-esque in that way. The thing about this show is I like it, but I don't think I loved it as much as other people 
loved it. The music cues were fun. Throughout some of the episodes, they play string versions of modern pop songs. Like in that first episode, you iconically get Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. There's Bad Guy by Billie Eilish that plays at one point. And then there's Wildest Dreams by Taylor Swift. So they have like those cool modern pop flares to it. In that way, it's definitely a modern day reinterpretation of a period drama. Aside from the music choices, you also have the casting choices as well. And speaking of casting... Another reason why I feel like a lot of people are talking about Bridgerton is because of like the sex scenes. I mean, episode five, but like mainly episode six, episode six. And I think there's also like a moment in episode seven. I was like, oh my, Sh Shonda is unleashed on Netflix here. I just feel like for me, I don't know, like not all of the characters really clicked. And it's funny because like two of the characters that I found honestly the least interesting, they ended up being sort of written off or the two characters ended up like going away by the very end. And I was like, Oh, see, look, the creators even know that those two are literally the least interesting characters on the show. But I will say I do enjoy the fact that Lady Whistledown is voiced by Queen Julia Andrews. And at least the creators know who Lady Whistledown is, unlike Gossip Girl. If you guys are still interested in catching up with Bridgerton, because this is a show that a lot of people are talking about, like I said, it's on Netflix, eight episodes, but yeah, a show that you can get through during a long weekend or something. All right, so that about ends this video. Those were just five of the shows that I watched in 2020. I didn't really tell any of you. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please turn on a notification button down below so you know when a new video from me comes out. And comment down below, have you seen any of the shows that I talked about in today's video? And if you haven't, which show are you most interested in watching? Also just wanna like, you know, preface and say, this is not a sponsored video like Netflix and Hulu. They are not paying me to say any of this. I feel like this kind of seems like a bit of promotional advertisement for their networks, but I'm just sharing what I, I watched with all of you. But you know, Netflix, Hulu, hit me up. I'm here, let's work together. But yes, that's pretty much it. Make sure your notification bell is turned on for my channel so you know when I upload a new video. For those of you guys who don't know and you're new around here, I host a podcast called Diva Dailies. It's a podcast where we deconstruct divas on film and TV and in music. So we're actually on hiatus as of right now, but if you're interested in looking for a new podcast, because you know we're in a new year, highly recommend and suggest that you check out Diva Dailies wherever you listen to your podcast. But yeah, that's pretty much it. As always, everything I said was just my own personal thoughts and all in my humble opinion. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!